our next speaker, Ira. Ira is an associate professor of computer science at the Allen School and director of the University of Washington Reality Lab. And she serves as area chair and technical committee of top conferences in both vision and graphics. Um, and on the business side, Ira loves building products. She uh, founded and was the, one of the CEO of the startup Dreambit, which is acquired by Facebook later that year. And she uh, currently is leading a 10x initiative in fashion at Google. And please enjoy her talk. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, let's see. Let me share my screen. Um, one sec. I'll arrange everyone here. Okay, cool. Uh, so hi, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Ira, and uh, I'm going to talk about a fashion-related synthesis. So uh, uh, I think that um, uh, the fashion space is kind of underexplored still, and uh, there is a lot of impact that we can do as a community via synthesis and you know generative networks and so on. So that's what I'm going to talk about. In particular, um, one thing that would be really exciting to do in that field is um, um, kind of unbiasing and diversifying the photos and the videos that exist out there um, in the fashion domain. For example, the uh, photo that I'm showing here on the slide, you can see um, this is for women, but you know it's true for every gender. People come in uh, different uh, heights, weights, um, uh, skin colors, hair types, um, and so, so it would be really awesome to represent the whole world population um, in the images that we uh, use so much for shopping, for uh, entertainment, for art, and so. And so I feel like this is where we can actually contribute in a useful way. So I'm going to talk about that. In particular, I'll focus um, uh, on a single work in, that, in this talk uh, that is um, we call Try On Again. Uh, it's going to appear at Seagraph, and this is work um, done by Katie and Srivatsan and myself. So um, to show a few results um, uh, right from the beginning, um, here is um, a generated results from, our, from the try-on GAN, where you see the same top uh, generated on different people. And uh, notice the, <clears throat> the quality and the um, uh, kind of the different changes in pose and so on. Uh, here is uh, the same person with different tops. Um, and um, yeah, so you can see, obviously not super perfect yet, but really getting there in the quality um, and the um, interesting variations and so on. So this is also a result of the algorithm. And the third one, um, same person, same top, but different pants. So uh, uh, we allow some controllability here. So I thought, uh, so these are, these are kind of the results of the algorithm and now let's get to the point. Um, but before that, I wanted to run a test for the people here and um, please let me know. Uh, we're gonna make it, try to make it a little interactive. So in chat, maybe if, you, if you're up for it, tell me which one is real and which ones are synthetic. And um, in fact, only one is real. So just tell me the one that is real and use uh, the row number in the column, for example or like top and bottom and one, two, three. I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, let me find the chat. Okay, let's see what people say. Um, top right, number three, what is number three? Is this top number three you mean? Let's assume that we start from top and left, right? It's five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Top middle. Middle top. Top middle is real. Top middle, bottom right. Okay. Anyone else wants to um bottom left? I think we have every single example left. <laughs> That's a pretty good distribution. Okay, um, I think though, it says, um, I see, um, I feel that there is lots of GAN people in the crowd, <laughs> not surprisingly. So the answer is, 
top middle. So good job to everyone who guessed it right. Um, it means that, oh yeah, somebody says can tell. Anyway, it's a hard one, especially for people that are not used to looking on, uh, you know, style again and again uh, results. They uh, usually cannot find the right one. And in fact, the, um, the most, um, the common one is um, that people guess as the, uh, as the real one is um, bottom left. But uh, this crowd is different. So uh, many of you guessed uh, the correct one. All right. Uh, now let me define the try. So this, this work is focusing on try on and um, obviously, and so let me define the problem first. So the idea is the following. We want to get an image of a real model um, of some body shape. And we want to get them. Um, and the other input is a real garment of a shirt. And the, let's say shirt here. And we would like to achieve a result where we see the person on the left wearing the garment in the middle. Uh, and this is the result of our algorithm. And so what needs to be done to make it successful? Let's see. So what is the algorithm supposed to be? Uh, what is it supposed to be doing? So it got a shirt on the sleeves, right? And so you'll notice that she's wearing uh, longer sleeves in the image on the left. So we have to shorten them somehow. Um, we have to generate the skin in a way that will look real and corresponding to the actual person on the left. Uh, preserve the hair, face, pants, and any other details that are not the shirt in this case. Um, and the, the biggest one, it has to adjust to the new body shape, right? So um, the, um, the model that was wearing the shirt was um, skinnier. And so uh, we have to be able to adjust to the new body shape um, and the, um, also to make it look really good. So for example, we can't have artifacts in the clothing to skin blend and like, um, you know, areas where where uh, clothing intersects with, with their body. So, um, of course, there is a lot of there is a lot of work in that space, um, like initial work, which is um, and really a really inspiring one. But when we look on the state of the art, uh, it's still kind of um, focusing on the you know the low resolution um, type of uh, results, and um, uh, is not very much aware of the body shape changes and so on. So this is example from Adgen. Another example from uh, Oh Viton. Um, this one is actually really cool because it can create combinations of different clothing, but still the resolution is um, is pretty low. And similarly with Adgen, uh, can change pose and so on, but resolution low and no body shape variation in all of this. On the other hand, uh, when we look on style again, uh, right? So we've all been impressed with the high quality and the detail and the. Um, uh, like uh, uber realistic results that uh, the architecture produces. So the goal of this particular work was to say, hey, can we use the success of style again for um, faces and see how we can apply it in the simplest way to fashion. So this work is actually really simple. I'll explain it in a very, uh, in a simple way in a second. So, and the focus was we want to aim for high resolution and we want to be able to change body shape. That's important. So let's see what we're doing. So this is the usual style again, again, in very um, uh, high level. Um, nothing is changed here, except that we would like to, you see at the top right here, we would like to create a fashion image. So this is just a generative, like just a synthesis part, no try on uh, whatsoever yet. Um, what we found that, okay, so then we took a big database of fashion photos, we trained just the architecture um, as is, and we found that it's, um, very, very sensitive to pose and it doesn't perform as well, body pose. And so we decided to add a pose um, encoder in the beginning and condition by the pose um, um, before, before we um, uh, train the full style again. Now, after we did that, um, we also added um, a segmentation component to, to the architecture in each, um, in each layer to be able to also get you know, where is the shirt, where are the pants, where's the hair, so labeling of the, um, uh, of the person. This produced pretty cool um, results already, just on its own, where the x-axis here is pose and the um, y-axis is a, the latent vector, z. And the, um, then if we choose a particular um, latent vector, meaning in our case, it's gonna be a shirt, um, representing a shirt, then we could change the pose because of the pose conditioning. So then you can create an, you know, uh, same shirt 
uh, different um, different poses. And you'll notice here that when I say pose, it also includes the body shape uh, because the pose um, kind of encodes the body shape as well. That's what we found um, um, in our training. And similarly, if you fix the pose, we can get different um, shirts uh, on different people, but in the same pose and this approximately the same body shape. And we can, uh, you know, fill fill in the whole um, uh, the whole space this way. So you'll see, um, uh, for example, you'll see like four different garments here and five different poses. So that was pretty uh, encouraging, um, and the and the photos are um, nice, um, nice resolution, high quality, and so on. So that was pretty encouraging. And here is also a, um, the output of the segmentation branch that I showed um, a couple slides ago. And so the segmentation uh, part um, looked uh, very good as well. I was able to label the, the images pretty well. Um, some, uh, here's a few samples from what the um, network uh, can generate. Uh, you can see different skin tones and different body shapes and different garments and so on. Uh, of course, if you'll if you'll zoom in uh, really um, uh, like a lot, you'll see some of the artifacts where you can you know that it's a synthetic image, but it's um, but it's pretty good overall and um, uh, state of the art at this point. Okay, so let's go back to the architecture. Um, and until now, I talked only about the generation part. How are we actually doing trial? Uh, so here's what we did. Let's uh, let's assume the network is trained. So at this point, the network is trained. We're done. Now we're talking about inference. So um, let's take uh, the bottom part. And uh, what we did, you'll notice, so here I went from a single Z uh, and W uh, to two of them. So now we get as input two images uh, where one image represents the person and the other image represents the garment. Now those two images need to be combined somehow to be able to then fed into the, um, uh, you know, the usual style again. Uh, so we introduced interpolation blocks where we, uh, uh, where we say that interpolation block in each layer is going to combine the two latent vectors in a way that um, will uh, allow try on in a way that we want it to happen. As in the garment comes from uh, ZP, the second image, and the person comes from the first image. Now, obviously, we don't know how to interpolate, right? So this is where the optimization comes in. We got to find the coefficients for interpolation in each layer. Um, and those coefficients are optimized. We basically iterate over loss function uh, where we want to, you know, as simple as we want to preserve the garment in the second image. We want to preserve the person in the first image and introduce some regularization uh, to have nice local results. This is it. So this is basically the idea. I'm on purpose simplifying, but that's uh, more or less the um, uh, more or less the uh, what we're doing. And um, yeah, so uh, let's look on the results on generated images. So um, here is um, um, the same the same model. I don't show the input here. I'll show the inputs in a second. Here is the same model with different garments. Uh, here is uh, the same garment um, or similar garment on different models of different body shape, pose, and so on. Um, uh, here is um, if the person is on the left and the garment is on the right in this case. Uh, here is the try on uh, result. So note that um, let's look a little bit on what happens. So the hair remained from the person on the left. Uh, the pants remained on the person from the person on the left. The shirt came from the person on the right. Uh, similarly here, um, let's see the result. Here we went from long sleeve to short sleeve. So that's um, um, that's uh, another difference. Um, then um, let's see different uh, body shapes. So again, we went um, and also a different type of sleeve as well. Um, I see there are some questions in the chat. I'll get to them in, a, in the end of the talk. Um, uh, another result where it's interesting to see the skin color change. So the person on the left had a darker skin color. The person on the right has a, whoops, has a, uh, a lighter skin tone. Um, and so um, we get in the trial result, we preserve the skin color of the uh, correct person. And, um, and, and we have many other results. So this one is a body shape example. You see that um, 
it went from the other direction. We usually showed uh, from uh, skinnier to uh, a little bigger body shape, and then here's the opposite. So that also works. Uh, and since the algorithm, there's nothing especially about shirts. It's all based on labeling and the segmentation part. So we could choose uh, that we're optimizing over pants area um, via the segmentation uh, label, and so we can get pants. So there is some controllability that is uh, dependent on the um, uh, on the uh, segmentation labels. All right. So uh, everything that I showed until now was on images that are generated. So if you go back to the architecture, um, we know that. So I was showing uh, what happens if we synthesize images from the architecture. With this basically take like random z's. Um, and then, you know, do the try and do the optimization, everything. So that works wonderful. That works great. Now, um, as um, many of you probably know, uh, to be able to take a real image, we got to project it to the latent space. And this is not trivial at all. So this is, um, uh, and we actually don't solve it in this work, but it's a really interesting topic. Lots of work on this um, in this area. Um, uh, really important. I don't believe it's solved yet. It's, it's a hard problem. It's called the inversion problem sometimes. And so the idea is that we got to take a real image at the bottom here, um, bottom left, and then uh, project it to the Z space, and so and then continue right uh, as before. Um, and this and this works up to some extent that um, the projection is lacking at this point. So once the projection is fixed, the algorithm, the triumph part will work, but we got to fix the projection. So um, at this point, this is one of the limitations of this method where you'll see, for example, these are real images now. And so the person is on the left, the garment is on the right, the result is in the middle, but you'll see that the details are missing. For example, the silkiness and the shininess, because they're projected. Basically, the reason for it is when we take the garment image and project it to the latent space, it loses some of the details. And so we're not there yet in real images, but uh, getting close. Similarly, uh, you'll notice that um, uh, this example is almost there. The sleeves are correct. The um, neck is, looks fine. Everything looks good, except for it's not as shiny. You can't get this feeling of the material yet. Um, so um, yeah, so this is where um, there is still work to do. We haven't done that part. Um, but you know, comparing to uh, with other work, I think our method is really, really promising. Here's a couple of examples. Um, of uh, personal and garment images compared to others. These are state-of-the-art works on these particular examples. And uh, here is ours um, um, as um, uh, in contrast. Uh, we also compared um, uh, with some numbers. So FID is a common score for photorealism. So we looked at um, FID of real images around 11, FID of um, uh, the other methods is um, so the 11 number is so FID is supposed to be the, the law is the better. So the lower the number is, the better the photorealism is. And so uh, the numbers for the state of God is around 87, 66. We're at 32, so not perfect yet, but um, uh, getting there. Uh, similarly, user study. Um, by the way, uh, the um, uh, people are actually not that good in understanding what is a good try on or photorealism. So uh, sometimes people would rank uh, real photos as um, as um, uh, not real, so around 90% there on the real photos, and then um, uh, we are around the 62% um, uh, realism and quality of try-on. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, this is all I wanted to I wanted to show that we can get pretty exciting results with a pretty simple method based on the uh, current advances in um, you know the style guide architecture and how we can look into the latent space and uh, optimize for it. And then, um, yeah, happy to answer questions. And um, please check out um, other works on my website. All right, let's see. I'm going to look at the questions. Do, do we have time? We're good? OK, cool. Um, Okay, so some someone asked, Neda, you asked in the beginning if the human identity is synthetic as well. So probably at the time when I showed those results, yes, synthetic. And then we went to um, at the real ones. Um, yes, Katie's planning to release a code. 
um, uh, uh, closer to SIGGRAPH, um, but um, it's actually pretty simple to implement, so people can uh, can try it. I was trying, I was uh, on purpose trying to simplify as much as possible so that uh, people will see how uh, how well it works. Um, Tally, okay, uh, if you try to apply the model on more in the wild data complex background, more diverse poses, this is a really good question. Um, we've tried a little bit of that. Uh, we didn't have enough data uh, at, at a time. And so we didn't do a lot of investigation as is the model. So um, let's see, so more complex backgrounds, um, it's not a problem because we segment. So we have the segmentation, so that covers that part. But more diverse poses, yes, that would be a problem because um, uh, you know, uh, sometimes fashion photos are from extreme sides or back or whatever. This model cannot handle it. You just got to train it on that type of photos and beam and make sure that the post conditioning. So we have the post conditioning in the beginning. Um, this is where we'll have to have really good pose estimation as well, right? So it's also uh, like correlated with that. So we use 2D pose um, that we estimated 2D pose, like state of the art 2D pose on all the images, but that also is not perfect on its own. And so we might want to consider a 3D pose in the future and, and so on and improve the 2D pose, maybe like retrain it just for fashion photos as opposed to generic. So this is where uh, it will fail on more diverse poses at this point. Um, okay, Aditya, how do we marginalize identity features during training? Um, we don't. So basically the idea is you train it and the only thing that you condition on is the pose and you have the segmentation. So segmentation includes some of that, but uh, the optimization loss in the end, let me go back actually to the architecture. Here, uh, but the loss basically is trying to preserve, based on segmentation, it's trying to preserve the person so it tries to preserve the, uh, you know, the hair color and the skin color and all of that. And the, on the other hand, it tries to preserve the garment from the other image. So that's how we get it. There is no specific conditioning on skin, hair, or uh, whatnot. Seems interesting to add in the future, but uh, it's not in this model. Um, Jing Wan, um, have you tried the same pipeline for the entire human body, not cropping out head and lower legs? Uh, we have not. That's uh, that would be a fun thing to try. I can imagine that then we'll have to be even better with labeling, you know, shoes and things like that. Um, yes, uh, Frank asked a question about cell phone uh, photos versus, uh, you know, um, a high quality professional photos. Really great question. We have not tried it. I assume that when you take, then you will try to, um, I mean, we could just try in the future with the same model, but um, my assumption is that cell phone photos usually have um, a, uh, some uh, perspective warping type of um, effects and so on that we, this model doesn't cover. This is all like nicely aligned photos. And so we'll have issues with that, some noise, uh, you know, lighting and all of that. So this model didn't, account for that. It could be though that this is where the issues with the projection will actually be very helpful because the model will just try to, you know, when it projects, it will try to normalize and average out things. And so it could just work. I mean, something to try in the future um, uh, when, if people are interested. Uh, the max resolution that we did right now was 512 by 512. Uh, uh, we actually, I mean, Stalagin obviously showed like 1024. We could try that as well. We haven't. We just did 512. All right. Any other questions? I'm happy to answer questions and um, if you just ask them. <laughs> you really well through those. Well 